Well, thanks very much for uh, the invitation to come and uh, speak today. And I'm going to um, pick up from some of Steve's uh, points and move it on to talk about some of the kind of the ethical and uh, risk implications of uh, some of these technologies, as you've seen, there's a whole uh, series of different stakeholders uh, involved in this. Uh, so just to give you a bit of uh, background about myself, so I do a lot of work with uh, Dublin, um, the four local authorities in Dublin, developing their smart city strategy. Uh, the open data portal for the four uh, local authorities is a joint project between the university and the municipalities. And we've been building out this uh, Dublin uh, dashboard, pulling together all kinds of data about the city and pushing it into one place through a set of tools that citizens can use. So you don't need to know anything about mapping or graphing and so on. It kind of does it all for you. So there's all kinds of data in there, public administration data, official stats, uh, kind of uh, municipal operational data, infrastructure service data, some of the real-time data coming off of the transponders, the cameras, uh, the sensors, uh, scientific data, uh, crowdsourced data from citizens, location social media data, and all, uh, various bits of derived data uh, from all those other bits of data. And then a whole series of tools, so some of the, you can kind of play around with the indicators and mapping data and look at location-based service stuff uh, and so on. And we're just about to start uh, uh, re redeveloping the whole site and pushing out more kind of uh, data analytics rather than, it's mostly uh, data visit at the minute. And then the last project there is the Program or City project, which is a large project looking at uh, kind of what are the social, political, economic, ethical implications of, of doing this. So in fact, what that project is doing mostly is studying the kinds of people on this panel and going and interviewing people. And we've done about 450 interviews now with people working in a smart city uh, field. And I'm gonna pick up on the ethical implications of this. So we've already said there's a lot of different uh, types of technologies here from government through into security, emergency services, transport, energy, waste, environment, buildings, homes, uh, and civic, all producing large amounts of data through lots of different stakeholders. So we have a diverse range of public and private uh, generation of data, often at a fine scale, uniquely indexical, uh, about citizens and places often produced in real time from utility companies, electricity, gas, smart meters, and so on, transport providers, environment agencies, mobile phone operators, uh, the apps that are on your smartphones, and so on, social media sites, travel accommodation sites, home appliances and entertainment systems, uh, your kind of smart thermometers, your smart TVs, and so on, financial institutions, retail chains, private surveillance, security firms, uh, emergency services. And basically, they're producing a data deluge that can be combined analyzed and acted upon, but often, as, as Steve's already said, they're hoarded and they're siloed, so there's a big challenge about uh, linking them up. Um, but there's also raises a whole series of kind of ethical and security uh, questions, which I've been thinking about uh, a lot, because uh, I was asked by the Irish government to, to look in depth at uh, kind of systematically across what was uh, kind of going on. And so we can think of things like uh, surveillance and erosion of privacy, there's a lot of information being uh, generated about people, there's issues around ownership, about control, about to what extent this data ends up in data markets and traded and, and ways in which it's used, the ways in which it might be used to socially sort or to redline people to make decisions about who gets an apartment, who gets a loan, who gets to go where, who gets to participate, uh, and so on, into things like uh, predictive profiling and anticipatory uh, governance, so into things like predictive uh, policing, into making decisions about uh, how we think people might uh, react in the future and then act on that uh, data now, into things like nudge and behavioral change and who gets to decide uh, how people should be nudged and in what ways and so on. So there's kind of power relations and uh, decision making going on there. Through into things like dynamic pricing and we know that people living in different zip codes can often pay different prices for services and goods uh, and so on. Into issues like uh, data security, which I'll come back to, and things like control creeps. So systems develop for one purpose being repurposed into another, uh, uh, another domain, and then through into things like uh, buggy, brittle, and hackable urban systems, which I'll also uh, come back to. So if we start to think about privacy, and we often think about privacy in a very narrow way, but privacy is actually a multi-dimensional term, and there's lots of different components to it. So we can think about our identity privacy to protect uh, our, our personal confidential data, our bodily privacy, our territorial, our location and movement privacy, communications privacy, transactions privacy. There's lots of different ways in which we interact with the world and the privacy implications around that. And the, the map on the bottom right there, by the way, is just the uh, FBI Cessna plane that constantly circles around Cambridge with its high 
res uh, cameras, it's night vision cameras, it's thermal cameras, and it's mobile phone tracking. So you, as you walk around on the campus outside, you're probably being caught by that. All series of different kind of privacy harms. So, uh, so we can think about surveillance, interrogation, aggregation, identification, disclosure, exposure, blackmail, appropriation, distortion. So this data can be used in lots of different ways to infringe your privacy. Okay. And so what's kind of going on here? So at one level, there's a kind of an intensification of datification. Like there's a lot more data being generated about us, in, often in real uh, time. And the capture and circulation of that data is often indiscriminate and exhaustive in the sense of it's all taxi cabs, it's all mobile phones, uh, and so on. It's distributed, which means it often occurs across multiple devices, services, and places, often platform independent. The data can flow across different platform services and devices, and it's continuous. It's uh, data generated on a routine and automated uh, basis. And if we think about what that means for, say, location tracking, if I wanted to track any of you, say, 30 or 40 years ago, I'd probably have to hire a private investigator who would have tracked you around, whereas now we have a whole series of ways in which we have indexical tracking of people through things like controllable digital CCTV with automatic number plate recognition or facial recognition, smartphones being able to be tracked through the self mass, through the GPS, through the Wi-Fi, sensor networks capturing tracking phone identifiers such as MAC addresses, Wi-Fi meshes uh, tracking as phones and so on, uh, attempt to connect on uh, to the Wi-Fi network, Smartphone, uh, smart card tracking as you tap in and tap out of, uh, of a subway system or onto a bus or into a building uh, and so on, vehicle tracking through unique uh, ID transponders for automatic road tolls or car parking, and there are a whole series of other staging points at which we leave a digital trace, such as using ATMs, credit card use, metadata tagging in photos that you might upload to uh, Flickr, I can see uh, where and when by pulling out the metadata, electronic tagging, uh, uh, shared data, and so on. This, by the way, is just uh, what comes off your uh, Android phone, which is uh, uh, kind of open by default, as opposed to closed by default. And you can see a whole series of data can be pulled off by uh, the apps from your email log through to your battery temperature, through to what Wi-Fi points your GPS, and so on. So we're, we're streaming off data off of our phones, and what's the kind of implications around uh, some of this? Um, and then it's kind of, you know, deepen, deepening uh, inferencing, predictive privacy harms. It's not just privacy harms, now, it's predictive privacy harms. How are inferences being made on the data and then how do the inferences affect uh, people? Uh, issues around weak anonymization or re-identification. And there's, a, there's now a series of companies who specialize in re-identification of data. Opacity and automation creates observation, reduces control. And a lot of these systems, there's multiple uh, uh, stakeholders and they... Um, and it's very difficult to work out who's the kind of the data uh, producer and controller and so on, and who you actually go to to get access rights and to find out what's happening. Uh, data are also being shared and repurposed in all kinds of unexpected ways. And notice or consent is often an empty e exercise. So these are the, the uh, fair information practice principles from the OECD. Uh, this is what we would uh, expect. In the US, there's typically four of them, notice, consent, security, and access. And the real question here is, is are these redundant in the big data age? Uh, one of the ones that's causing the problems in the EU is that data can only be used for the purpose for which it's collected. So it's a uh, data minimization. And obviously, big data is all about being repurposed, so it automatically raises all kinds of issues. Uh, and then there's issues around data security. So what happens if people can kind of hack in and steal these uh, records and, uh, and so on? And we all know there's been all sorts of data breaches. Almost once a week, somebody announces X million records have been uh, taken. And then, of course, there's an issue of what does it mean to install a lot of kind of software, embed that into the fabric of cities in terms of being able to hack the city. So uh, there's all been all kinds of examples now of things like uh, traffic lights being hacked and so on. Uh, so weak encryption, insecure legacy systems, poor maintenance, very large and complex attack services and dependencies, all kinds of cascade effects. Uh, so if you start to interlink to, build, to actually take down your silos, you can kind of get into transport, work your way into energy, work your way off to water, work your way through through kind of city operating systems and so on. Um, and then things like human error, disgruntled ex-employees and so on. So the, the, you know, this infrastructure potentially becomes uh, uh, quite vulnerable. And, and so obviously cybersecurity around this is now becoming uh, quite a big uh, issue. And then I was asked to kind of produce uh, some solutions. And my four basically were uh, market solutions, which is kind of industry standards, self-regulation, uh, looking at privacy security as a competitive advantage, 
the technological solutions, so this is end-to-end -end strong encryption, access control, security controls, audit trails, backups, up-to-date patching, privacy enhancement uh, tools, uh, some of the um, uh, differential privacy I think was talked about yesterday and so on. Uh, policy and regulation, which is actually to review those fair information practice principles, to move to things like privacy by design, so privacy is inbuilt into the system as opposed to being layered on afterwards, or security by design by the same thing. And then governance, which is actually kind of the cities and, uh, and state governments actually starting to think very carefully about what's happening here. So uh, kind of smart city advisory boards and smart city strategies. At the minute, we kind of ha have accidental smart cities. A lot of this has been developed ad hoc, and then it's kind of uh, been developed in different departments uh, rather than being developed in any kind of coordinated uh, way. Issues around governance and risk and compliance. And then things like uh, on the ground, actually, uh, core privacy and security teams who are doing privacy impact assessments, doing security risk assessments, and so on, and computer emergency response teams. So basically, if your city is hacked, who responds? And how do, you know, do they know uh, uh, the procedures for uh, uh, dealing with things? So, so kind of a multi-pronged approach into starting to think about how to address uh, these issues. And I'll end there. Thank you. <laughs>